Originally, I got interested in, in working with the bark because you read about a lot of um, a lot of traditional crafts from other parts of the world, um, particularly in North America and Scandinavia. It's the inner bark that's used, which is effectively the phloem layer, the bit that's moving the sugars around the tree. It's supple when it comes off the tree, as you'll see in a moment, and then it turns back into wood. So if you want it to stay supple, you've got two choices really, and the best one probably is to, um, is to strip it very, very finely and then it stays a little bit bendy, as it were. The other option is to pick the, one of the very few ones that does stay st supple, and that's uh, Western Red Cedar. And these strips here, as you can see, are very, very bendy. I took this apart from an old container, but if I re-wet these, um, they'll be perfectly usable again. We've got to find this balance where we allow them to, to dry enough that they don't shrink and create huge, great holes in the weave, um, but also that they're not so dry that when you bend them, they break generally speaking, is to remove the outer bark, um, otherwise they're, certainly for weaving, they're much too stiff to weave, and even from, from a folding point of view, they tend to uh, split at the folds when you're doing folded containers. The bark directly mirrors the, uh, the, the tree and the growth, so if we've got bendy, knotty trees, we have bendy, knotty bark. And I'm just going down till I get to that nice white stuff. And hopefully you can see from here that it's quite a reasonably clean bit of wood. Sometimes you get these dead patches. So once I'm happy that that's clean, I'll try and cut down through the inner bark right to the wood. Sometimes it's worth making just a little little spud, especially if you've got the odd knot. As we're trying to get this off in a quite clean, in a nice clean sheet, without punching any holes in it, and sometimes it just needs a little bit of help. This was probably bark basket making season for our ancestors. And they probably made them, wore them out over the rest of the year, and then had a big basket making party and made a load more in the spring. But the beauty of this sort of material is you can collect it. Um, store it, roll it up, and let it dry out. And then if you just soak it, it becomes pliable again. So it's um, infinitely workable, really. It comes off like leather, and then turns back into wood. I can't think of anything else like it. And you can see all the chestnuts full of tannin, and all this reaction, this purple, is the tannin oxidizing. So the other secret to um, making a really neat, tight container is to have all the strips a uniform width. And uh, when you're learning, if you are going to have a go at this, probably the easiest thing is to use a straight edge, which is what I'll do now. I'm going to make these strips probably about a centimetre um, in thickness. So now we can think about weaving this into the shape. So when we are starting this uh, particular craft item, if you want a nice shiny smooth side on the back here, then how you fold these obviously is, is quite important. So the first step is to fold them in half. I'm going to have the shiny side on the outside. Cross them over, so we have this little point, and then I'm going to keep adding um, bands in, if you like, and the more I add, the wider it will be. So I could have a little squat wide one, or I could make it narrower. And then I'm going under, over, under, over with these. So I'll put one in that side, and the easiest way probably is to just do one side, push it into the fold, turn it over, and then make sure you're doing under, over, under, over on that side as well. And the other important thing is to make sure it's tight. So all the time you're, we're putting these in, we're going to make these very, very tight. Well, in, in the UK, there isn't um, anything I've ever come across as a tradition, but um, certainly in Scandinavia, and um, there, are, there were cases, I think, of um, particularly in Belarus, where they made um, shoes with this sort of similar pattern um, uh, from lime bark. But all these, uh, lots of these traditions and crafts you can, um, you can research from other parts of the world, like the west coast of America, where cedar is used, um, it's almost like their tree of life. Uh, they even beat it out and, um, and weave it into clothing. They beat it on logs and it goes very, very fine. And you can, uh, you can drop spin it and, uh, and weave with it. The key thing to remember is that they're all in pairs, so what I'm going to do is pull this top pair back, this top one of that one, fold it out the way, and this one effectively goes up a, and gets bent at 45 degrees, and still goes under, over, 
Oops, can't get hold of that, it's too wet. Under over, under over. And then before you go any further, fold this over, come back to the other side and that goes back up and effectively always goes back to join its partner. So you always finish with a pair. If you've got an odd one sticking up like that, then there's something gone wrong. These were used um, a lot by, uh, by cultures and we do look to North America a lot because um, essentially within historical memory there's a, there's, there's a, a hunter-gatherer culture there which is the aspect of, of life I'm interested in. Um, we've got two choices to finish off. What we can do is we can weave back down in on itself which is, um, is illustrated here. So effectively, and this is a flat-bottomed container but it's the, exactly the same principle, because they're coming up in, in pairs in effect, what we do is we, we um, cut that off and we can um, sharpen it to make a little needle and that one would fold over. I, I'm not going to try and weave this because it's too wet um, and go back down on the weave and then that one comes in effectively and locks that one in. Um, these folded containers, they, they're obviously based on quite big sheets of, of bark that, that, um, that come off. They're very, very simple. Um, and we're used, well, for all sorts of containers. You can make a slightly bigger version of this, in effect, and it becomes a lid, so you can have sort of quite sealed containers. You can work them with, um, with, with pitch, with birch tar, with pine pitch, and make them, seal them, and make them sort of waterproof. I did used to um, start to try and heat wood up, bend it, boil it, all that sort of stuff. It's very, very difficult to get it um, neat and even, I find. So what I do now is I use, um, use just strips of bark and then stitch them in with other stri strips of bark. So there, the joy, the joy of bark. <laughs>